Hey, do you like Dust War journals? If so, you might consider supporting us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash dustwarjournals where you can support us with as little as one dollar a month and that would make a huge difference for us keeping the podcast going and the site up. Thank you very much and now on with the show. This is Dust War Journals episode 16, the final episode of 2017 and my name is Johannes Haglund, also known on the internet as Frankie and with me today is... Oh, this is Luda, here to you all out there in the world. And Magnus. Yes, Magnus he's back! Magnus. Yes, <laughs> I'm back. Yeah, so uh, congratulations are in order, I think. Definitely. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so how's uh, life been treating you so far? Uh, it's been good, it's father. been very busy, and uh, as uh, I guess most fathers would say, you get not too much sleep in the beginning, but it's, yeah, it's, it's getting better. Yeah, we see no traces of uh, diapers or food or uh, anything no, else. No, I, I uh, left all that at home for now. <laughs> Great, that's good. Yeah, and uh, just hobby life in general, I guess it's not been that much time for, for you, Magnus, for that. Uh, no, not really. I've, I've been tinkering just a little, little bit with um, uh, my allied, my US Marines, but it's going very slowly right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> And that's that's kind of the general pace for most people, I think, around this time of year. There's a lot of stuff to do, but well, mm-hmm. uh, f- uh, for me, I've got my my uh, Cthulhu army set, so started to put that together. Mm-hmm. Uh, really big and really nice looking models. I'm lo- really looking forward to painting them. Um, we had a, a test match just a few days ago. Yes, with yeah. it was glorious. <laughs> I, of course, lost because they're hopeless to play against, <laughs> but I killed my first Mythos creature. Yes, you did. Uh, yes, my OP Marine uh, Class 2 is now Mythos Killers. <laughs> yes, I'm so proud of them. So you should, you should paint an extra little stripe <laughs> on the list. Uh, and I will, uh, I have secretly named the guy who killed it, and uh, I will reveal that later on. Awesome. Uh, but, but uh, of course, he's now the Mythos Creature Killer. Uh, a great game, a great game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let's just go straight into uh, the news, I think. Just talking about this. There's been quite a lot of uh, cult activity, mm-hmm. so to speak. We first have the uh, the cultist dwelling, a new sc- scenery kit. Mm-hmm. So basically just a um, little one square house, but with uh, Cthulhu cultist markings. This I, I really love this range. So um, we have seen uh, quite a few of these uh, on pictures, and we've seen a few of them in real life because Olivier has brought some to tournaments and so on. I can't wait for more of this to get released so you can build an entire table full of this stuff. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's the big thing with this. Uh, now they are having a few different kits, so you don't have to have multiples of the same, so you can have that slight variety. Yeah. Even if it's just, I mean, the, the size, uh, is exactly the same as the next building, but they still look a little bit different. And uh, I think that's important to make the table look good overall. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the new terrain pieces they have been putting out this year is, is excellent. It's very, very nice. I hope the retail on this is, is good so they can keep this up because it's so nice for us who, who enjoy buying great scenery as much as we like buying good uh, units. Um, it also inspires the hell out of me to produce my own uh, scenery when I see that they give me these uh, great uh, inspirational pieces. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, even if you don't buy all of these, uh, if you just get one or two of them, you can produce some some of your own and just get, yeah, get that right feel to make it look... Really nice. Yeah, and just match it paint was you can paint your own cultist symbols on yeah, your exactly. terrain and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, can't wait to see what people are going to do with this. Yeah, and this uh, Cthulhu hut was actually just a little bit spoiler here because we're coming to a hit list uh, later on or a oh, top yeah. list. And this Cthulhu house was just on the edge of getting into the top list. And I will have one terrain piece on my list. Because this has been such a sensational year for terrain for Dust Studios. Oh yeah. To me, you had to have a terrain piece in there, but it wasn't the Cthulhu, uh, cultist, uh, 
uh, dwelling because that just edged out. I couldn't bring that on the list, unfortunately. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, that's... Uh, next on the list for the new releases, we have kind of a re-release. It's the Nordwind. Uh, I, this is the Condor and Babylon premium uh, dustified kit version. Right. Uh, for those who, those who haven't seen this kit, it's basically a, a Puma, uh, an armored uh, transport carrier, mm-hmm. uh, but with a turret from the Sturm... What's, what's the name of that walker? The Axis transport walker. Uh, isn't it the Sturm Prince? Yes, the Storm Prince. That's correct. Uh, I, I gotta say personally, I love this model. <laughs> it's absolutely marvelous. Uh, I used it uh, in my old Axis army before uh, 1947. The in the old version two, mm-hmm. I used this vehicle a lot, and it actually really, really did well, much better than I thought it would be. If you just look at stats, but just the, the fact that it's really fast, it has scouts, it has quite a lot of machine guns, yeah. It's it's really a cool unit. It also, just uh, going ahead a little bit here in the program, but there was also this one is also one of mine that I really thought about, mm, should I try to get this on the list? Because and also, this also just I was left out, just marginally, but this is also a um, an evidence of the great GDR the German uh, troops have had because the German years with the, their uh, units and their vehicles have been sensational as well. Uh, I could have made a free top five list with only the German units that were <laughs> released this year. So yeah, it's it's been great. Well, it, it was the year of the Luftwaffe. Yeah, but not only Luftwaffe. But it was only three Luftwaffe units on my top ten German list. Oh when yeah, when I was starting with that, that when I was trying to okay, what had happened this year? What had, what had they brought? Um, yeah, that's cool. Hmm? Uh, next up, we have a limited edition model. The Nyarlathotep Resin Limited Edition. So we haven't seen this one, uh, so we can't really say what the exact difference is. But uh, from we've, what we can read on the on the site, it seems that uh, the resin allows it to have more detail, mm-hmm. basically. So it's a, a more detailed and kind of a showpiece model. So this is for the, the serious painters and modelers out there. And I also think that this is the single most expensive model that the studio has released so far. It's one model, and it's $88 retail. So, yeah, this is for the serious collectors. Yeah, but it's a very nice model. It, it definitely is. It's just a plastic uh, version. It's it just towers over most almost everything in the, else in the game, basically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it certainly has a presence. When you put it on the table. Yeah, and now that the duck has finally been killed, I mean, or whatever, however you <laughs> pronounce it, or whatever you should, however you should say it, when I, when I realized you could take the motherfuckers down, <laughs> I, I've started to get this, oh, I can't wait to the next time I face Cthulhu, because I want to kill those big motherfuckers <laughs> yeah, yeah. again. Uh, but, but still, uh, for me, the fraction in itself, the army in itself is still a, a no. And, and no, and no army. It's nothing action. I, I won't do it. I, yeah. I'll pass it. But I will. I'm started enjoying killing them at least, and that's very good. All right. right. So maybe the next uh, part on this list is more interesting to you. Uh, mm-hmm. Can I re-release the heavy grenadier anti-aircraft squad? Yeah. This is uh, the squad formerly known as the Flak Boys, the uh, C- uh, Soviet three. Axis units with the Flieger Faust uh, released uh, today. Uh, yeah, uh, released we today this, when uh, we re- when we record mm-hmm. this. Yeah, <laughs> so. Most likely the final release of 2017. <laughs> they have a few more days, <laughs> but I doubt it. Yeah, and this is actually... I would like to cheat on this one, because I would like them not to release this. Because uh, for some reason, especially when you play the Flat Boys, <laughs> you don't have to roll the dice if I play SSU. My choppers just fall down. <laughs> uh, we've had some seriously mentally challenging games when you have like two flak guys left I'm talking singular guys and they bring down two choppers in the same turn and I'm like what the fuck are you doing you honest this is not it this is not human if you paint some Cthulhu symbols or something like that but because actually those those flak boys Paula and Oliver you have to take them out of the assortment you have to take them out of the line just ban them from tournaments. It's not okay. Just 
erase them. Sorry. Yeah, people talk uh, <laughs> a lot about the Panzers, but I gotta say these guys are definitely my favorite Soldier Three Axis units. Oh. Definitely, Be- just because of the versatility. Uh, they can kill infantry and they can kill flyers, mm. <laughs> and they shoot pretty, yeah, quite a lot of dice. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the game when you use them and you kill a tank in close combat for me or something like that with <laughs> like <laughs> some of the big lever and barrack. Yeah, so. yeah I, um, I agree with you, uh, Jonas. Uh, this unit, to me, it's the best uh, Soldier 3 Axis unit, actually. It's... Uh, there are a few of them, but these guys, they kind of withstood the change to the to, uh, the new rule set, and all their stats and points were basically unchanged. Yeah. Whereas, for example, the the um, assault unit, the, the panzers, yeah. they went up quite a lot in points. So they are still good, but, you know, a bit expensive nowadays. Mm-hmm. These guys are still rocking. Yeah, evergreen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But now that Magnus brings up the Panzers, or the formerly known as Panzers, <laughs> I have to jump ahead a little bit, because they are actually my favorite this year wow factor. Uh, when I played a game, and I realized, oh shit, I've so misunderstood this. Uh, and it was Laura and the Panzers, which we all <laughs> yeah. always used to call them, like the band name, uh, Kalle brought them back from the dead now that they were re-released. And uh, we played a few games when he played those. And it was just, people have been too cruel to Laura and the Panzers. They they were ubermensch before, but they're still superhumans. Mm-hmm. You face, well, if you only have walkers, of course, in your army, then yeah. you, you can handle her. But an experienced player playing Panzers and Laura... It's a given. It must be. They are so fucking good. And they still kick ass like almost no unit. And it was like, it was so wonderful to have that feeling like, oh shit, why haven't I used these guys? I have bought the hype. They're too expensive. No, they're not. They are perhaps they are more expensive now than before, but they're still almost too cheap. But, but well, of course, that's I'm going to go one step further <laughs> and say... You should try putting Laura with these uh, anti-aircraft guys. Yeah, like I usually do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's kind of the, the point I was getting to, is that Laura is just such a good force multiplier. Any unit you bring Laura to is immediately like 10 times better, mm-hmm. just because of the move and fire skill. Uh, definitely, but, but still... I know because people were doing that when the point uh, shifts were coming. They were putting, okay, no, the Panzers are too expensive. I use the Flat Boys instead. And, of course, that's a very good combination. But you miss out on a few things. You can be even more deadlier, especially when it's so infantry heavy that it is nowadays. I'm just thinking, in my book, Panzers and Laura is still the best one. You can't beat that that combo. Uh, it's very even matched, but the Panzers is still... I don't know if that is jumping ahead, but have you guys have any of those wow moments this year uh, that like, oh shit, I've forgotten how good this unit was, or I've tricked myself into thinking this unit was good, and now I've realized again it is a crap unit, but preferably have you had any of those why am, why ain't I playing this unit anymore? <laughs> it's, it's a great unit. Why ain't I playing it? You know me. Uh, I don't know. I've been playing, you know, for the more than the past year uh, since last autumn. I've been playing uh, mostly like older allied units. So I've been trying a lot of different combinations, and there are a lot of fun units out there. I have my own personal wishes about what things. Uh, some things could be better, some things could be maybe not better, but different. I, I'm not, you know, completely in love with a few of the stats, not because they are too bad or too good, but I, you know, I feel that this unit should be able to do this instead, Yeah, for mm-hmm. example. But uh, there are a lot of nice units out there uh, mm-hmm. from the older units, and it's really nice to see that they are getting released. So, I mean, these uh, guys that we're talking about now, the, the uh, Heavy Grenadier Anti-Aircraft Squad, uh, they've been kind of difficult to get hold of. They were only yeah, released in the in the revised corset, 
so it's really nice to be able to get them as a single unit now because they are very cool looking and it's a good unit and it's been kind of hard to get hold of it. But now you can, so that's awesome. That's so perhaps that's your uh, wow factor now. Yeah, but I mean, they, they have released a few of those units mm-hmm. over the year now, and it's mm-hmm. it's great. It's absolutely great to see yeah. those coming back. Yeah. I, I think for, for me, uh, one of those units that was kind of a surprise to me mm-hmm. uh, when I used them was Bullseye, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. the uh, sniper for the Desert Scorpions. Mm-hmm. Um, because, well, he is a sniper, mm-hmm. At least to me, snipers aren't really that powerful in this mm. version of the game. Oh, just because of the, they mostly just do one damage. You can maybe use them to kill an officer or a medic or whatever you want to kill from a, from a command squad. But other than that, not that much. But the thing with, with Bullseye that I discovered was that he's an expert with demo charges. Yep. <laughs> and he's a spy, isn't he? And he's a spy. Yeah. And he cheats death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. that's a really that's a really powerful combination, mm-hmm. and it surprised me how much he was able to do, and just how it forced my opponent to focus his forces to try and get rid of him. Ah, and mm-hmm. that's the kind of effects that I love mm-hmm. the the kind of units that suddenly force your opponent to go to go from there kind of intended plan. Yeah. Because that means that I can do something that I now didn't have the opportunity to do. So that, that's kind of the stuff I love, mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to find those kind of weird units that not, not only surprises me, but also the opponent, yes. that they su- suddenly do something unexpected. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's mm-hmm. all the studio releases, but we have one more piece of news uh, from the from the last month. That's true. Yes, uh, the uh, custom dust foam from Battle Foam, and uh, yeah, this is a company that makes carry bags and foam insert for these. And uh, back a few years ago, they had uh, a, a custom dust range that you can get that fits uh, specific walkers and such. And then they kind of stopped doing that, and now they've started up again. Now you can get dust specific uh, custom cut foam. Mm-hmm. From Battle Foam. That's also, I think, a really good indication of, yeah, the game is doing pretty well. Yeah, moving in the right direction. Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah that's nice. Mm-hmm. That nice. And it, yeah, their bags and their foam are expensive, <laughs> but they are really good. But if, if anyone is looking into buying Battle Foam, stick around for their uh, 4th of July sale, because then almost everything they sell go down like at least 10%. So wait around and you can get some deals. That's how I did with mine. I have two battle foam uh, bags in different sizes and I think there was 50 and 60% off mm-hmm. respectively in that sale. So Yeah, you know. I've been uh, marveling at your uh, great cases there and I've been envious of you. Uh, I, I still haven't made the amount of money available for myself to go, but I would like to get yeah. some of those. It's still the I'm IKEA sure if, uh, uh, me. I mean, us here in Europe, uh, do we have to order directly from no, Battle Foam or? They, yeah, they, they have, uh, they have some distributors, uh, other, other companies that in, distribute. They, they do have, they do have their own distribution center in the UK. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And soon. So we don't have be... to order overseas. No, 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 no customs involved. Yet. Okay. And we're yeah. almost getting our, you know, we're getting a new airline from Gothenburg to uh, Bristol. Mm-hmm. So you can just uh, probably soon just fly for one crown over there to <laughs> get them introduction. <laughs> yeah, it's and cheaper get, than yeah, just sending it by post. Yeah, you bring your, <laughs> you know I mean, you bring your bag home then. I mean, <laughs> yeah, probably it's, it's cheaper and just uh, go to Britain, have a few beers and just <laughs> yeah. bring your battle foam with you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, right, that, that's all the new units, but I think we should talk a little bit uh, about the Cthulhu guys, because there are some news and some previews and some stuff like that. Uh, first of all, like I said, uh, I have my first summoning army box. Mm-hmm. Uh, the interesting thing uh, that I was really very much looking forward to is the booklet that came with it, mm-hmm. to get uh, some more details about how the rules for them work, the included platoon, and maybe some previews on upcoming stuff, and yeah... All of that's included. Mm-hmm. 
there's a ton of stuff in this booklet and it's really, really cool. So first of all, the platoon advantage, and this is uh, spe- specifically for the units that's included in the box. Mm-hmm. Um, and the platoon advantage is that as long as the leader, the avatar, is alive, you cannot target any Cthulhu mythos creatures in this platoon with sustained attacks. Yeah, well, actually, if you and if you spread your fire amongst several targets and you want to perform a sustained attack, any any shots fired against these guys, they just count as a normal attack. Yeah. So yeah. even if you spend two actions to attack, you only get to to re-roll any. Let's say you have mercenaries or cultists mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, you can only re-roll dice against them. So yeah. they will be... Yeah, these monsters will be pretty tough to take down. Yeah, they definitely. And since, you know, we can also spoil that. I think that when we played the first time, we were we, we played with this platoon role. Yeah. So that's why also perhaps it went so sour for me. But, uh, it, it could be. Yeah. 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 Uh, but it, it's a learning curve, definitely. It's yeah. like playing with the Luftwaffe. If you, if you meet... If, if, for instance, we're new to the game and you were playing Roger for the first time, I take him as an example because I feel him as the leading Luftwaffe general in Sweden. Uh, he would eat you alive. You would be, you would ch- you have no chance because he will know exactly how to exploit his troops and you have to think differently. Uh, if you were playing a seasoned SSU veteran, of course, with a drop platoon with the K-47s, you will also be eaten alive. There's yeah. no doubt about it. But if you have played a few games and you understand you can't play the normal way against a list like that, then it's a totally different ball game. And only two games in now with the mythic creatures as an opponent, I definitely see the possibilities of crippling them. Yeah. I we, we did uh, talk a bit about that after the game, and there were definitely some points where it could have turned. Definitely. Yeah. And I still ain't totally focused on taking down the big guy. Because I feel I see all the uh, juicy big targets, and I want to kill them all, and I'm frightened of all of them. So I flee from every one of them, except you. Actually, made you gave me an opportunity to take him out if I just had reused my uh, Black Hawk better and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, when you get experienced, I think they will be nice. I'm still. Super frightened when we get to the Cthulhu cultist when their platoons come in when they go to 125 points and shit like that. Then I still think they're gonna roll stuff, but I might be wrong though. There and I make a yeah. A we'll, poodle. we'll we'll see uh, <laughs> when when all that stuff arrives. We also yeah. had some uh, kind of indirect previews of upcoming stuff because yes. uh, in this platoon, uh, not only is it the avatar of Nyar Lathotep as the platoon leader and the spawn of Cthulhu as the support units, but you also have uh, the option of using the avatar of Cthulhu Oops. as the platoon leader. Oops. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the Cthulhu guys we've seen so far are just the small ones. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Tiny, puny things. <laughs> Barely right. noticeable on the game board. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, th- this might be something to look forward to. And, uh, and you, you were speculating, sorry for interrupting, about how big he might be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. because we've heard uh, some kind of rumors that uh, we are going to see units the size of the Titans in Warhammer 40k. Yeah. So could this be one of those? Yeah. How many squares will he occupy? Four, six, eight, nine? <laughs> yeah, three by three. <laughs> yeah, by three. I don't know. I mean, how heavy will it be to lift, even if it's rested? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Possibilities. 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 We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, as an option for the support units, we have the spawn of Shub Nigurath. So this is uh, we haven't really seen any Shub Nigurath. Um, units before, so we don't really know how they are going to be interpreted. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. makes it interesting because the the ones we have seen, the flying creatures, yeah, the the Migo, yeah, yeah, they have to have their own platoon, so to speak. Yes, they they might have. Yeah, no, no, well, every one thing has one platoon, hasn't it? Is that, doesn't every unit? Well, yeah, yeah, it, they so, are. Yeah, I have actually a reason why they are going to have a platoon, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Huh, good. Uh, we have some clarifications for the rules of the mythic creatures as well mm-hmm. in this booklet, and it's uh, 
Specifically, they, they cannot have, they, they do count as vehicles, mm. put, as per the rules, but they cannot have passengers and they cannot have a pilot. Mm. And that makes absolute <laughs> sense <Thank> to me. <laughs> uh, they also can never be targeted by officer special actions. So hey. they can never be reactivated or they can never be healed by a medic mm. or repaired by a mechanic. And any of the command actions yeah. cannot be used on these Yeah, areas. no and stimulants, nothing like that. Yeah, that's, uh, now it's only the superhumans that have to have the same rules. <laughs> it is not much. much. <laughs> so that's a good thing. The final thing is that they can contest objectives, but mm. they can never claim objectives. They can never control objectives. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely good. That's mm. a good... Yes. Kind of balancing acts. So you, that means you can focus on trying to get rid of the foot folk. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can deny that possibility of winning for the Cthulhu Mythos player, maybe. Yeah. And they, if I understand anything about Cthulhu, their main objective is to rule the world. So why do they give a shit about a fucking, uh, I don't know what, uh, archaeological pit or something yeah. like that? They want just to kill and wipe everything out or, or mind control them, or whatever they do. So, yeah, but I guess that's what the cultists are for. Then, and, and you know, mm-hmm. the 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 puny humans will uh, <laughs> will be there to control the puny objectives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the final thing, uh, we had a nice little video interview from Pax and Li- um, Pax Unplugged mm-hmm. with. Uh, with our favorite Dust representative, Greg. Mm-hmm. And this was the Gamers on Games uh, YouTube channel. We're going to have a link on for this video in the, in the notes for this episode. There was some quite interesting uh, Cthulhu-specific tidbits in this video. And talking about the Migo. The Migo is an army uh, or a unit of three figures, so much like a Soldier 3 or Soldier 4 unit. Mm-hmm. And they are going to be included in the starter set. Instead mm-hmm. of a vehicle, right? So a good, so if, going by that, you're going to have a hero, an infantry unit, and these three Migo. Ah, and that's where the platoon comes in because every mm-hmm. starter box released so far has a platoon, yeah. except the PLA because they haven't got that yet. But it's probably going to go in the in the next expansion book. Mm-hmm. And how quickly will we will we tire upon those common jokes that now that they are the vehicle that. We go, me go, you go, <laughs> everyone goes, and they, of course they are the vehicle. This will be, of course, horrendously annoying. Yeah, a while. it could be. I we'll go, see. you go, me go. Yes, everyone goes somewhere. Uh, We're going to have more stuff coming up also. Uh, the studio is working, uh, Greg said in this video, on Gugs, on Deep Ones, and on Shubnigurath, and that's uh, the thing we've seen. So... Quite a lot of different monsters and creatures coming up. And uh, Greg also said that at some point there might be factions inside the Mythos block. Mm. So factions uh, based on the specific uh, gods, I guess. Uh, that is, of course, logical. I, you, you get, of course, immediately you get a little bit terrified then being the uh, World War II dustifier that you, uh, well, will this just go into being different Cthulhu monsters fighting each other's on different and nothing about the World War and the other aliens and stuff. But uh, of course, they will balance this. That will be a yeah, I, I think it's going to balance itself out. And just, just the fact that uh, as far as we've seen, so not all players are going to be interested in this these armies. Oh. So you are going to have, I think, a majority of pe- pe- people playing the human armies. I, yeah, I, I think, think so too. I think so too. Yeah. So we see how this shakes out. And they've also always said that the, the Mythos block is going to be a, a smaller block. It's not going to be a fully-fledged block. But you are going to have some options. You're going to have opportunity to do stuff, different stuff with it, but it's not going to be as big a block as the SSU or the Axis or the Allies. No, but if they peak with this new uh, resin uh, mythos creature and everything else sells like butter in sunshine, <laughs> we will see a lot more than so. Could be, could be. And uh, another thing is just uh, if people just buy these models for the models themselves or just mm. use them in other games, yeah. uh, I can definitely see people trying to make rules for these guys in other games like 40k or something. You can definitely see that. Definitely. 
Uh, what, what's that? Uh, perhaps we shouldn't talk about this because it's, this is a part about dust, but it's that uh, almost adventurous role-playing game when you play um, against Cthulhu monsters in mansions. Oh yeah, the, the, all these Cthulhu that are coming out should yeah, be yeah. just super for it, and you. Should be able to use them in. Is that called Brimstone? What's it called the, the other game? There? Yeah, the possibly. Western, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thing or so, I mean, yeah. so There's buy them for that. Buy them yeah. for that. Everyone out there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, this is like like we said the uh, final episode of 2017, and to kind of celebrate the year that has gone by, uh, we have put together our own little personal top five lists of the most exciting releases of 2017. And it's going to be... We haven't really conferred with each other about the meaning exactly of this, so we are probably going to have different interpretations. But we're going to get go through this uh, list one at a time and see uh, what's <laughs> what's up here. So who wants to start? <laughs> well, I can start because yeah. I already started beforehand. I would yeah, go ahead. I needed to jump the gun. <laughs> So, and number five. Yes, number five. <laughs> and I, I'm going to say it again, so I, I get to do it later on. I'm going to cheat, of course, uh, like I told you before we started recording. <laughs> like you always do. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Everyone who's played me know I'm a cheater. Uh, but, of course, you have to put a terrain piece on the list this year. Uh, at least that's my view of it, because they have made such a huge impact of terrain pieces. Uh, so I'm going to go with one, and I had my own top five list, actually, of terrain pieces. But And there are several very good ones. Uh, you could talk about the Ruined House set, too, but, but I've made two of my own, actually inspired by that. Uh, the, I wish I could have bought them, but my economy was a little bit... Ah, well, let's get to it. It's, of course, the Rocket Prototype. Oh, it's yes. the most beautiful train piece I've seen Dust Studio make through all their career, I would say. And I'm so happy that I managed to scrape a few pounds together or a few dollars together so I managed to get that one. It's my... Ah, uh, yeah. So, Rocket Prototype. That's super terrain. Yeah, nice. I, uh, I agree with you there. It's really nice and it... it Almost made my list. Mm. But oh, not cool. quite. Yeah. So, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, let's take mine. Uh, my number five. Uh, I think as everyone who has listened to this pod knows, I've been looking forward all year to the Desert Scorpions. And uh, they didn't disappoint. <laughs> and just by looks alone, this unit is just has a given place on my top five list. So on my list as number five... The Humber Mark V, because it's just so cute. <laughs> I just love how this unit looks. And the fact that it's cheap and it's pretty good on the battlefield. I mean, yes, I, I just can't help just have very warm feelings and perhaps not that appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, it's, it's so understandable. It was on my top five allied things for this year, uh, even though that was also a tight contention there because it's so many good allies things also that were done but uh, it didn't make my list so uh, good that you had it in there so we can talk about it I don't know if Magnus or you, how do you feel about the Humber uh, I think it's nice but it's not that high on my list it wasn't close to, to placing on my list actually mm-hmm. um, I like it but yeah not that okay so you're number well five. Uh, my number five is uh, you're probably not going to guess this actually <laughs> Um, my number five is the Steel Guard Anti Infantry Squad. Oh, yeah. Wow. And why is that? I don't really play the SSU, but I still like the Steel Guards a lot and their um, the looks of them. I think it's a super cool army. Whenever I start playing the SSU, uh, there's definitely going to be some Steel Guards in there. I can't really tell how many of them, but I feel that. Um, with their hero, Guaylo, when he was released, he made them a lot better. And oh, yeah. with this unit, they get some really nasty punch. To so, so now, I mean, of course, they are a bit better rules-wise also with their saves and everything. But with this unit, they are a force to be reckoned with, I would say. They are. They have some really nasty punch now. So I think they are a lot more playable. Which is, I mean, I, I fear this unit. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm afraid of it every time I see it on the table. <laughs> yeah. Um, but still, it, it makes them a lot more playable, which is nice because, uh, like a year ago, you, or even more, you didn't really see any steel guards, but now you do. And now they also can, can fare pretty well in tournaments. So, yeah. yeah. So this was a nice unit for them. It's very good to see steel guards on the list, of course. I am warmed by that. Uh, I was thinking about that unit because that unit had made a lot of impact this year when you play it and you see it in lists. Uh, I have to unfortunately say, though, that that's the only one that they have fucked up on the studio. It's too powerful. I, I agree with that. Now, I have had the arguments beforehand. I said it wasn't. But seeing it, how you're able to manipulate and destroy the rules with that unit, uh, I did not take it because I I don't fancy it. I'm irritated on it. And I will never play it in my SSU. I have all the other Steel Guards. Never but, buy it. Never play but it. But isn't that more kind of a fault of the whole passenger thing? Yes, they are definitely overpowered when in a vehicle, when they're able to quickly get to the opponent. When you can handle them on range, and if you play three mats and stuff like that, they, of course, shrink in their value, and they are more manageable. But uh, these are the ones that enable people to break the rules and the army list and break the SSU mold. So uh, it, they're super units. Uh, I think they should be on any one of our lists. Because they're, but I personally can't take them because I feel they shake. Yeah, they are. They are really good, but there's a combination of stuff. Maybe their stats could be a little bit lower, and they could be a bit cheaper, or they could be some other changes uh, of the rules. You know, different parts with Mm. yeah, transport, blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah blah. blah. Um, But that that's that's a different question. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. They are on my list because they made the steel guards. Yeah, a force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no, no. And uh, to see. With, with that, I think we're going to go over to number four. And I think I'll start with my number four. Because my unit on on uh, my number four is the Steel Guard Anti-Infantry Squad. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and for a completely there. different reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, the reason why I put this on uh, number four as the most exciting unit is that I think this is the one unit that has caused the most discussion mm. of everything that's been released this year. Yeah, it might be true, actually. It was a mm-hmm. lot of discussions with the helicopters, and uh, we also saw a change to the um, to the helicopter rules that mm-hmm. they, if they fly, if they make a march move, you can't fire at all. Yeah. And that was sometime after this unit was released. So. Yeah, so I think that sparked from the release of this, <coughs> that discussion. So... Yes, just the fact that people got engaged and talked about this unit, I think that that makes it one of the most exciting releases this year. Yeah, I agree totally. So it's good to see that in the list. Should you do your fourth then? Okay, my number four is the Hexe and Geist model kit. And that is the reason I put it on the list is that uh, it's nice to have more airplanes. There aren't too many of them, actually, mm-hmm. if you count the number of mm-hmm. units. Definitely. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we'll see more, especially allied, I would say. But, mm-hmm. but this one I put on the list because, um, it has some new interesting rules. It is different from almost all others. It has, yeah, different weapons. They had, uh, they have the radar skill. They have, they are, I mean, they are faster than the helicopters, but they are slower than the other planes. So they are different. And they are, I would say, probably the best anti-infantry units you can get. So so suddenly the Axis have some really cool stuff to counter the SSU helicopters mainly. Or even other airplanes. They bring something, I don't know, something new, something different to make the, the aircraft dogfights more interesting. That's... The- Totally true. It's so well said. And I'm so glad I could count on you bringing the axis. Because <laughs> since we only were allowed to take five, I, as I said before we started recording, I had to scrap all axis units. Mm. I actually, the, the hex, hexi was on my top five axis for this year. Uh, and I had like eight things I wanted to have on this list that were axis. That's how great axis year I thought it was. Uh, actually only three of those. I didn't think I said that on air. So we're only Luftwaffe. Uh, actually five things were non-Luftwaffe 
And still, I wanted them on this list, but I couldn't. So you have to take some. So I scrapped them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what did I? Oh, perhaps you want to uh, comment on the hex? No, of course. Yeah, I, I think it's a lovely unit. Mm. I think the the reason why I kind of downgraded it a bit on my list is because I haven't had the opportunity to actually play mm. either with or against it, mm -hmm. and it, it really hasn't made to me personally then made that much of a splash but it definitely has the potential i can absolutely see that so it it will be very nice to see it in action definitely yeah when i go german next time cash wise it's definitely one of those that will fight for the honors to get my money because yeah. that turret under and the big bomb yeah. it's it's just yeah, it's, but, it's uh, hilarious it's hilarious yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well my fourth then uh, i of course have to have Something Russian on the list. I have more things that you could call Russian on my list later on, of course, but I would not say that they are per se Russian. So, and I have to have a unit as well. This is my only unit on my top five. Oh. That's how fucking crazy I think this year has been. And when you guys <laughs> tell Tommy all that five things. So, and it's also one of the wow things. It's of course the type 47. Oh, uh, because the sheer amount of joy I had putting it together, the sheer amount of joy I had playing it, and that also one of those this unit can't be that great of a unit, because we had I, I also had downplayed it when I saw the stats, I thought it was a quite a fucking weak unit <laughs> but for some reason it plays like a charm, and it plays like a charm with uh, the steel guards as well, so play it with your steel guards and you will have value for that money I, I'm ecstatic about it, but okay, you know cool. me. Okay, uh, my number three. Mm, yes. Oh no, shouldn't it be uh, minus one that takes? The no, no, sorry, we, we skipped it because yeah. shifts around. I don't know if that's interesting, but okay. So I will go number fairness. three. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, my number three is none other than Greg and Dizzy. Oh yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because, well, yeah, it's, it's a super cool model. It's very mm. different looking from, <laughs> from basically everything else, yes. <laughs> actually. And, um, it, he's a very powerful hero. And, um, he's very interesting since he's, um, uh, he's part of the Desert Scorpion faction, which means that you have to, if you want him in your regular army, which if it's not Desert Scorpions, you really have to, to think about it because you will not be able to play, uh, if I get the faction bonus. Um, but if you do play, mostly you will probably have the lighter vehicles and you have really have to think about what vehicle to put him in. He, he brings, I don't know, he brings some interesting choices to the allied player. And he's fearsome to, if you face him on the battlefield. I mean, uh, every opponent should fear this guy because he's really good. Yeah, and that's so funny. I, I had him, of course, on my top five allied list. He did not make my super list. Uh, I bought him as soon as I could because the model is beautiful. Uh, but that's the, the funny thing. He's the total opposite of the, uh, uh, of the type 47 for me. I faced him five or six times. Tate taught, took him out every time. I faced him in the uh, six shooter in the Devastator. Okay, I didn't take him out in the Devastator, but I like to reminisce on this. And this is also a favorite part of the year in Warsaw. I made someone who played the Devastator and uh, Greg in it back away and run away from my German <laughs> Type 2 infantry. And I'm not going to say his name once again, should I? But he knows who he is. And uh, it's one of my highlights of this year, actually, <laughs> having to yeah. run from him. Yeah, I can definitely see uh, why, why anyone would put Greg on your list, but I think that the thing's... He, he does, he, he kind of, uh, I've, I've been using him a bit, uh, when I've been trying to, trying out my Desert Scorpions. And he is, it's a learning curve with him, I think, because he does do a lot for the vehicle that he's piloting. But at the same time, he is an enormous, just bullet magnet. Hmm. So suddenly I, I find myself playing more defensively with him. And that's I, I, that's really not how you're supposed to use him. So yeah, I want to protect him because he makes that vehicle so much better. But then the vehicle doesn't 
get to shoot and just mm-hmm. get so it's very it's weird balance there. Yeah, and seriously, guys, you have to think about he has five lives and he has a hell of a dog with him. Rush your fucking units. You will see that is in Udidea. There's a spoiler alert for everyone who shows up in Udavalai in, in January. Uh, Izzy will come at you and he won't give a fuck if his vehicle is uh, destroyed because then the dog will go on a rampage. You won't kill this guy so quickly because he has a lot of lives and when he gets to you, that dog will eat you up alive. Uh, hair, crosshair and uh, nation symbols and strike first, savage animal, everything, bite, grapple, whatever, whatever all, all the rules he has. He, he will be a mouthful, I think, yeah. in close combat. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's kind of what I mean. Uh, yeah. I think you should play this guy fairly aggressively. Of course, it all depends on a lot of uh, ver- uh, variables in the game, but um, yeah, that's my view of him. You should play him fairly aggressively, mm-hmm. and if his vehicle is destroyed, then fine, just keep going with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> keep threatening stuff. Just yeah. rush towards, uh, I don't know, the command unit or the yeah. objective or whatever it is, because he's... He's a bad boy even without his vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Three dice on normal infantry that hits Aziz as well. Yeah. Because he he's so he good wow, well, okay, so she shouldn't dwell on it. Yeah. Right. A very good choice, my yes. of course. That's There's my number that. three, Greg and Aze. Yeah, that's good. I have to, of course, uh, now come into the uh, well, the other stuffs that I just thought had to be on the list. And my number three is of course Operation Condor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so glad the first expansion is coming out there next uh, rule booklet or something like that with all its beautiful stories the enormous amount of marvelous pictures it was such a great work okay it could have been even better with some more detailed work before printing and stuff like that spelling and stuff but this is what I've been hoping for and wanting and it looks so well in my shelf and I'm so happy now that I got it uh, eventually um, and now we have a visitor here <laughs> what, what's the name of this uh, creature now again <laughs> yeah it's my cat come to say hello yeah hi so, Tippy it's all right. not, I thought it was the spawn of Cthulhu <laughs> <or something. laughs> so if you now hear some strange coughing in the background it's not we're not doing anything suspect anything strange <laughs> anything unethical it's just the cat coming into the studio okay <laughs> or the hobby room it's yeah. almost like a studio so uh, sorry yeah Operation Condor for me number three good choice yeah mm-hmm. I, I also uh, love this book uh, for me it's I think that the thing I enjoyed most about it was actually the short stories mm. because they are really setting the mood uh, and the, the scene for the entire the entire world and the entire atmosphere of it. So, yeah, it's a good choice. Yeah, for me too. Also, the short stories were really nice. Um, very, very... They, they painted very nice pictures uh, and uh, some some really cool action sequence. And, and you... Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, Dust is a very story-driven game. Mm. I really enjoy reading those fluff uh, stories. Uh, and, yeah... Very nice to see the the expansion finally come out. Yeah, yeah the, visually the Operation Babylon was good, but this is to me taking it a whole new level. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. format and everything. So, so big hats off to that. Definitely. All right, my number three. Yeah, the first summoning army box, the first release for the Cthulhu block, and just it's a new block. How can you not put it on on the top five? I mean, just. For me, this is really, really exciting that the game is moving in a completely new direction. And I know this is not for everyone, uh, but even if you never play with them, even if you never play against them, the fact that they are there and people are buying them and playing them is good for the game, I think. And that's why I think this is one of the most exciting releases of the of the year. Yeah, I agree with you, but... I did not put them on my list, actually. Me they are on my yeah. short list, just yeah. outside yeah. of this, for the oh, very yeah. reasons. Okay. Yeah, for the very reasons you mentioned there. Uh, I have no plans at the moment at, of buying them. Uh, I will probably play against them since you got them now. <laughs> yeah. so, um, 
They but the are, risk um, is, uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would say as a whole, uh, for dust, the dust community and the dust game, they are a very exciting release. But for me personally, mm, they are not quite there. They didn't make it to my top five. No, and the same thing here. I we had to make choices here with well, only course. five things, and therefore I had to let them go since it won't be my thing. But of course, the more I play against them, they will go higher up. Perhaps next year, the Cthulhu cultists will be on my top five, if we only have a top five next mm-hmm. year. But uh, then, next year, we might have a top five uh, Cthulhu or a Mythos creature <laughs> list as well. Uh, who knows? Uh, who knows? Yeah. So, uh, good choice. But, um, yeah. Right. So, only two left. Yeah, is it my turn now? Then? Yeah, sure. Should, I don't know uh, how you want to do this. But, for me, this is this is a strange one, in, in but I, I just had to put it in somewhere, and I had I thought we need to talk about it even more than we have done. Uh, and this is I, I I seriously seriously think that this is very good for the game, and that was the fact that they managed to get the battle for its sphere abroad primed to player starter sets. Oh yeah, I know it's old units. It's the old things from before that they repackaged and put together. But and I still think that the the small starter sets will be the things that draw people in. But as soon as you get that first box home, you will instantly think, "Oh, I need to broaden my army. I have a friend. I want perhaps to have an option to play two different armies." Mm-hmm. You get everything in once. Okay, it's not compatible because you get paper uh, mats and you got a rubber mat in the first box and stuff like that. But to me, I think it's so very important that they did not close this route and they had that door open. So, I, yeah, I had to add it in. That's my number second. Yeah, those are all good reasons, actually. I, I didn't really think about this one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you have a point there. For the, for the game itself... Uh, for the opportunity to bring in new players, and I mean, um, I I've always been a fan of these uh, two-player starters mm-hmm. in, in any game, basically, because um, you need somebody to play against. So it's it's always better to start together with a friend, yeah. So you can start quickly. Uh, One-player starters, yeah, they are cheaper, and, and, but still, you have to like convince somebody else to. To buy their own, or uh, if you are in a convention or something, and buy your own set, and afterwards you have to convince or, or find someone to to buy their set and everything. So it, it complicates a bit. These two play start sets are so easy to start right away. Yeah, uh, that's a good, good, very good reasons uh, overall. Uh, this was on my short list, and uh, I think the major reason that it didn't make the top five is that it is a limited release they are not going to be around forever. And that kind of brings them down a bit, unfortunately, because it would be a good idea to keep something like this available permanently. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I just hope that they do well and that they are going to do something similar, Yeah. Um, but perhaps with other units in the future. Yeah, they could hopefully rethink it, the decision only to make it a... But I think they said, actually, that there was going to be a one-time offer because... Some in the studios perhaps did not believe in them too much, and some did, and it's been a little bit back and forth, perhaps a power struggle. But will we do this? Will won't we? And then they decide, okay, fuck, we go to this and we do it, and they did it, and hopefully now it's a success. Because I, I only hear good things about it. I haven't hadn't heard nothing and it was anybody saying like, oh, why did you do this? It's old stuff, just and it's it's just shit. And I only had heard positive about yeah. this. Absolutely. Ah, yeah, well, yeah. So, my number two. Uh, yes. One, a repeat that we've already had, so maybe not uh, dwell on this too much, but my number two of the year is the Operation Conroe book. Mm. For all the reasons that we mentioned earlier. It, it's just it's just a lovely book. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. Uh, my number two is the Desert Scorpion truck set. And I've actually put specifically the first one, uh, meaning uh, the one with the command, the gun, and transport truck. Yeah. Uh, I think those models are absolutely beautiful. Uh, they, they really stepped up in, in, I don't know, detail and, and execution of them. 
gorgeous models and game wise they also bring a lot of new stuff they have some completely new rules uh, completely new kind of way of of playing your army like your super fast army of course we haven't seen um uh, like platoon rules and stuff there will be more coming out so i, I have big hopes for them uh but still um uh, yeah i think they are awesome both i mean both those kits are really nice uh i think the command one made my list because it includes the command the command is always oh, yeah. important <laughs> and it includes two cards for that one so you can also play it in a block army which is really good definitely well, yeah, and then I'm going to jump the gun. Uh, I'm going to first say I'm disappointed in you. Uh, <laughs> how the fuck could you have this on only the second place? Uh, this, but of course, yeah, it's individual. Uh, to me, this is the one that blows the roof. This is the one that I'm, I don't have it on the list. This is my <laughs> cheat. This is beyond everything. This is the best thing they ever have done. This is just... When I opened my box, it was... Uh, I, I'm sorry, I had made something on Facebook about it. I was giddy. Uh, this is the, this is the winner by a mile, especially the one with the command unit in. It's the only one I've gotten hold of. I haven't the other set yet. It will be coming when the money gets back to me. So, uh, when I get more money, I should perhaps say with uh, this including also, and then I also incorporate the heads because the release of the heads they were doing because they also had all those heads in. The truck set. Yeah. And when all those heads spilled on my floor, <laughs> I felt like a giddy serial killer. I mean, all... Let the heads roll. Yes. <laughs> How many heads? I, I, I started building totems. I was like, this is just... It's a new step for the studio. It's it's a new... So it's almost like it's the next gear. It's the next line. Everything else is just, okay, the resin um, Cthulhu thing for the super painters. That, of course, is is in that same category, but this is like, it just feels like they're stepping up to the next level. Uh, they haven't had the heads before. They haven't had the swappability. They haven't had the, they take it one step further. They had had multitude versions in one box, but this is just beyond that. So, yeah, and I, I remember when we saw the digital renders of yeah. these, and wow, they look really cool. But when the actual models were released, they just, I don't know, they, they blew my mind. I yeah, think yeah. they are absolutely awesome. And still, they are only at number two on yeah, my yeah, list. So, so, so interesting now. What the <laughs> yeah, hell exactly. could beat that? Yeah. So, uh, for, first off, I yeah. got, got to have to of course you've got jump to in there. Yeah, uh, because please. number one on my list yeah. is the Desert Scorpion truck. <laughs> Yay! So, yeah. Yes, you are yeah. for, yeah. for all the reasons. Yeah, and, and uh, Because I absolutely agree with you. This This release feels like just such a quantum leap for, for the studio. Just the quality wise, the, the design wise, all the different options is just the sheer amount of stuff you get in this kit. And, and I'm, the I'm not detail of all that stuff. Yes, it's, it's fantastic. And just the fact that you get all those options in the primed set. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that because it's just ready to go. Just put it together and play with it in five minutes. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have, I just can't say anything bad about these units. And if this is uh, a kind of indication of the quality and the craftsmanship that the studio are going to, to yeah. show off in later releases in 2018, I think we're in for a very good year. Yeah, if you want to have the, what do you call, small kick in the bag. And I don't know, <laughs> if you want to have this, put some dampener on this, yeah. the expectance levels now, when I open my next model kit from the studio, Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have to sit down and take some sedatives before I open it, because I expect to be blown away next time as well. Uh, that's the only foreseeable problem for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and let's just say this to the uh, audience as well. We haven't started with the champagne yet. So <laughs> we are this giddy naturally. <laughs> okay, so Magnus, should you or I go first with our first since he has spoiled this? Uh, okay, Please go ahead. And now it's very interesting if we think the like, because I'm going to try to uh, connect with something that you said before. Uh Dust is so story driven. It's so much important. The story, the fluff, 
everything around it, what makes me want to play it. And of course, I hadn't got it beforehand. So the special prime, uh, special limited edition of the Winter Child novel, Sverigrad, the book, the miniature, for me, that's the top one. It, it's, it's nowhere near the desert <laughs> trucks, of course, but we've already made <laughs> excuse for that. But for my then top, I am an SSU player by heart. It's the next novel. I just love that they give me the extra fluff on the side that can broaden my hobby. And of course, Winter Child is a super model. Uh, it's a wonderful playing piece. It's just the little thing that I have to do with the command traits and not in transport and other stuff like that. Just fix the fucking rules. And then everything, <laughs> everyone can play the superhumans and they are super nice and they are vibrant story, beautiful. I, well, I, I could go on all night. Please. <laughs> Right, so my number one has already been mentioned <gasps> by both of you, actually. <laughs> I have placed Operation Condor as number one. Right, <laughs> very nice. Okay, that's um, a good one. That's, well, uh, for the reasons we mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, because it's a very nice book and very well written and I love the stories and everything, but I think actually why I placed it as number one is that it when it was released, it really felt as the game um, took a big step forward. I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not uh, talking about uh, rules-wise or miniature-wise or anything, but I felt that, okay, now the ball is really rolling again. Mm, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I really felt it. And also, in, like, in the community, there was oh, so yeah. much buzz and, and a lot of talks and, you know, things really kicked <laughs> yeah. when, when it was released. So I think it was... Very nice for for the game, for the community, for everything. And for me personally, I really enjoyed reading it. I think it's very well yeah. written. It's, it's so very true good. that it perhaps was necessary that the Condor book came when it did because we had a small of a, sort of a decline in the hobby and the Condor thing. Really yeah, so the, as, as nice as the, the uh, Desert Scorpion tracks are, mm -hmm. uh, I still think that the, the uh, Operation Condor was really the most important release, basically, mm -hmm. over the year. Yeah, I can definitely so see that, That's why I put it as point. number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good choice. Well, yeah, you're smart guys. <laughs> Even if you didn't have my exact list, but it's... Uh, <laughs> you still, you still <laughs> I have to say, you're, you're very smart guys. <laughs> What, what do you think? Could I uh, interest you in a few extras? You, you had some kind of bonus thing going Yeah, there. I was thinking about it. Like, uh, favorite tournament this year <laughs> you've been to. What's your favorite tournament? Oh, uh, that's interesting question. I had two. I, I, either it was the one in Toronto or it was the Warsaw. But of course, I had to go with the Warsaw because it's the European Championship and I had a splendid time as always. They had... We have talked about it before that leveled and made several steps. Yeah, it, it's hard to beat, I think. For me, it definitely is worse all the European Championship. Uh, and not just, not just for the tournament itself, but for the people. Mm. Because all the people there are just lovely. I, I absolutely love going to Warsaw and playing there with, with those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, I did not go to as many tournaments as you guys. So, um, <laughs> I don't know, Ludwig is trying to tell me something here now. But oh, I just uh, thought you were going to uh, mention perhaps that your favorite tournament were perhaps the Dust Nordic tournament. <laughs> but perhaps I was wrong. <laughs> no, yeah, it, uh, uh, it, it was nice, but I mean, as, as uh, one of the organizers, I didn't really get to play that much, and it, it's a bit different when you're organizing stuff. So, But uh, we had a good time there anyway. So Absolutely, yeah. So... Uh, and okay. ho hopefully it's, it's going to be a good tournament in 2018 as well. Yeah, I'm, def I'm certain that you guys will pull off an immense tournament. Uh, but uh, talking about tournaments, you always have to have scenarios in tournaments. And I'm thinking, I both have my favorite not played yet scenario and my favorite played scenario. <laughs> uh, and they're a little bit similar and have some... Uh, Oh, no, they have not, but, but you, you understand when I say it. In the, my favorite not play was like box on get the cheese. Well, we were at the cheese factories and were playing for the cheese. Yeah. That's, I didn't play it, but I love watching it. I would love re reading it. And I hope I will play it soon. And uh, my favorite played, of course, this year is get the cheese when you were chasing <laughs> the goats. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
super scenario. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys know who made that scenario? No, you read it? sorry. Uh, no, I don't know who did it. Is. But if you listen to this, whoever you are, you got my sincere thanks because it was a s- splendid scenario. <laughs> don't you have any of those uh, just crazy scenarios you played or something? Perhaps you've written a scenario made this year and you like. I can't really say I have. I, I have played too few games this year, and it's been, uh, I don't know, I played uh, some older scenarios, um, played a couple of the new ones, and there's been yeah, a few good ones. I can't really say any particular. I, I mean, I didn't go to Tronos, so I couldn't play the, the cheese scenario there yeah. either, so <laughs> I read it, and it sounded like a lot of fun, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I have a specific one that really pops to mind, uh, at least when it comes to like standard tournament level scenarios. But I think one of the f- most fun scenarios and games that I played was the big battle at Dust Nordic. Oh, yeah. The one that had the all the armies, the SSU versus the Axis versus the Allies, and we were like seven players, and uh, it was kind of the night night fighting rules, and the, the sun was slowly rising. It was just so cinematic, and was just exciting, and yeah, it was a tremendous game. Yeah, that was a really cool yeah. battle, actually. Yeah. yeah, the best big battle we played this year. I think we can all say that, even yeah. if we were yeah. part of it for yeah. some reason. But, but, <laughs> but still, we didn't write it. It was Ulf and Kalle, so we oh, were yeah. uh, just participators. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, actually, I would like to I have a, another category here. I have a favorite tournament fuck-up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to mention uh, it was me uh, on Das Nordic. It was me and uh, Ulf None of us read the rules for the scenario. None of us played the scenario right. And both of us were frustrating and irritated afterwards that we hadn't understood the rules of the scenario when it finally <laughs> got to an end. And uh, we were both semi-organizers. <laughs> None of us knew the scenario or read the rules. I think that is an achievement in itself. I, I, yeah, we might mention that uh, Ulf actually did that kind of twice during that <laughs> tournament. <laughs> Completely misunderstood, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was thinking <laughs> about up another screen. game there, but please pile on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so always remember to read the scenario <laughs> before. <laughs> Good advice, yes. <laughs> definitely. Uh, any of those uh, things that when you play a game, you, you like this? Why? Oh, or why did I do that? Or like charged like something that you had first strike when you didn't, or something? I don't know. Remember. I, uh, I don't know. I, I, something that just popped out, uh, which is, I don't know, it happens, I guess, fairly regularly, not only to me, is that you forget exactly which units have activated or not oh. uh, of the opponents. Yes. <laughs> I did that in, in one game and uh, I just stepped out. I thought I was safe for this turn at least. And uh, then I realized that, you know, like after a couple of activations, I, I realized that Oh crap, my opponent haven't activated his tank yet, which was fairly close. You could just move up with machine guns and flamer and everything. And yeah, uh, yes. that, that unit that I planned, had big plan for, you know, to capture the objective and everything. It, it, yeah, it didn't happen. Great. <laughs> it is so good to hear other seasoned generals. So, so yeah, I, I, like I, I did something similar in yes. Warsaw ah. <laughs> in one of my matches where I, I kind of, Forgot that uh, my opponent had uh, a Nadia that hadn't airdropped yet, mm. <laughs> and uh, put both my command hero and my command squad, <laughs> so he could just fling both of them. <laughs> that, that was pretty. That was pretty dumb. I got to admit that. <laughs> that shit happens. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, well, then I also had two other categories, but I think I mentioned them. The favorite kill for the year. Even though uh, my memory is not that good, of course, the first Mythos creature kill a few days ago. <laughs> that's just, and a favorite rediscovery also, the Lara and the, uh, but, uh, I don't know if you have a favorite kill. I oh think. yeah, I do. Yeah, uh, do. yeah, one of those, one of those matches. I, I lost the match. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really a factor in that, but it was just such a wonderful moment. And, uh, I was using my Axis Amdak army mm-hmm. with, uh, all those guys. And I was, uh, fighting an SSU army with Winter Child. Ooh. And yeah, <laughs> you can already see where this is going, yeah. basically. <laughs> and he just goes around and wrecks everything. I can't touch him. And I managed to get a few shots and get him down, like, I think two points or something like that. 
And at one point, he uh, moves up and he flanks uh, one of my Heinrichs. Mm. Uh, so, okay, I have to try and do a reactive attack here. Uh, and I have to do both in order to just do some damage. But I just, I have to try mm. because I'm going to die yeah, with this course. unit anyway. So, of course, you do it. So, I just roll and my reactive, as you guys know, <laughs> I very rarely succeed at all on these rolls. In this particular instance, I not only managed to roll double national, national symbols, so I could move and I could fire. The resulting attack actually killed Winterchild. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that just... I'm going to live off of that moment for quite a while, I think. <laughs> yeah, even an SSU player like me enjoys that story. Yeah. Like you can just dust yourself off in the Heinrich there and go, yeah, yeah superhuman anyone? Yeah, well, <laughs> doesn't bother me, does it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The... the the thing I can think of of favorite kills is probably uh, when I did the um, uh, the Dust Zone battle report mm, with yeah. uh, Attila uh, mm, a while yes. back, and um, which I have to say is viewable on the Dust Viking web page. So yeah, it's, I mean it's on YouTube, so it's it. the link there. So yeah. Uh, yeah, watch it if you haven't. It was a really nice game. Uh, with a very nice guy, Attila of the Dust Zone. He's yeah, a very hope nice he guy. comes to our tournament soon. Yeah, I hope so too. We'll have to try to convince him. Yeah. Um, that game s- started not very well for me. Um, it was a little bit back and forth, but he had this Matryoshka, uh, who had a nasty habit of hitting with both of its dice oh. against everything, basically. So he one-shotted my... Um, uh, my rattler, I think it was, like immediately, mm. and I tried to kind of outmaneuver him. Succeeded a little bit, but then he just, you know, moved up around the corner and he shot, and he immediately killed my six shooter. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it started to look pretty grim. Um, but then I had Emma, which is a super supermodel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And um, she, too, yeah. yeah, she used her stimulants on the um, uh, the Soldier Three, what they call the um, uh, Ranger Heavy Ranger Attack Squad, the Soul Squad, those guys with the machine guns and, and oh, the yes, fists. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they moved up, and they got to re-roll their close combat attacks. And first, they killed off a unit of steel guards which was kind of a bonus, oh. and then they hit all of their close combat attacks against, against that Matryoshka. And by that, with that moment, everything in that game just turned, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a very pivotal moment, and uh, yeah, when that Matryoshka was dominating the center of the board there, when it was gone, yeah, the game kind of went my way after that. And I'm so thankful that that happened because when I watched that video, I was thinking, okay, I see where this game is going. I won't hear the end of this. Magnus will complain. The Russians are overpowered. The allies are shit and everything. I will complain about that no matter what. Yeah, but this will give you extra fuel for the fucking fire. It's it's still burning. It's already burning. So, uh, But then, yes. And even as an SSU player, I was so happy for that. Yeah, so, well, that was just a few uh, random things I, I, I've written down. Yeah, before, thank you. So. That, that, was, that was quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in conclusion, this has been quite a year to be a Dust player. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, and I think, uh, as we've, as, especially now since we've gone through our top five list and just see uh, what we've have, what we've got and what we can possibly look forward to. I think the next year could be even better, actually. Yeah, it looks it, lo- it looks amazing. I mean, this, the the spoilers we've seen, the rumors we've heard. It's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a great year. Yeah. So, with that said, uh, I would like to thank you guys for uh, joining me for this podcast for this entire year. Oh, thank, thank you, thank you for having us. Yeah, and of course, a big thank you to all of our listeners and to our supporters, and. To everyone out there listening to us, we will see you in 2018. Yay! Yay! 
If you want to get in contact with us doing the show, you can email us at dustwarjournals at gmail.com or you can find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Dust War Journals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.